pointers have something that is so cool that no other dogs have. They're the ones that point when they, they sense that there's a pheasant. When one senses the presence of a pheasant, he goes on point. The other five that are with him may not smell it, but they, they see the one that smells it, and it's called honoring the point. So when one smells the presence of the pheasants, the other ones can't smell it, but they see that the one smelt it. So they honor the point, and they all go on point. Okay, if dogs get it. When somebody senses the presence of God, and they can smell breakthrough is on the horizon. When you can sense that God is about ready to heal and set free and deliver, and somebody goes on their knees, and they go on point because they smell it. Corporate anointing, this is what's wrong with the American church. The American church is all about me. Corporate anointing has to do very little with you, and it has everything to do with us. We become so critical, and yet we still want to move of God. I'm not saying anything here. I'm just saying to a critical spirit that perhaps is watching or whatever. I have low tolerance for that. We're going to sing it one more time, and some of you are going to get healed. Some of you are already healed. If you just check your body, you're going to find out. God's into annihilating. Some of you, I don't know who's here, but if you check gag, ganglion cysts, check if you got a ganglion cyst. It might have been disappeared already. Some of you check the ache you came in. It's probably gone. Because in the atmosphere of worship, anything is possible. So as we sing, as we sing it one more time, I want you to forget about you, me, myself, and I, and then we're going to come into the us. Because the corporate anointing is about us. And what God wants to do, and, and if you have to sit, if you have to kneel, whatever it is, let's honor the point. Let's honor the point because God is wanting to heal. This is a healing atmosphere. It's not a prophetic a prophetic one, I'm sure, will come because there's prophets in the house. But right now, God wants to heal. Some of you have healing that you need in your body. Some of you have broken hearts that are so fragmented that you need God to mend, and only God can mend them. And the oil and the wine is present right here to heal. And if you allow, God is able in a moment to pour in the oil and the wine into your fragmented soul and put you back together again. I'm declaring to you in the name of Jesus, you don't always have to be and living in pain. God wants to deliver you from your pain today. He wants to make you whole. So as we sing one more time, whatever you have to do to allow God to come, let's do it as we sing. We come on. We you hope.
You don't even know what you did, but some of your children are being converted that have been perverted by the lies of the enemy. And I'm telling you, some of your sons and your daughters are being converted back to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Some of your children are being, listen, the the addiction is being broken. The lies are being broken. The abuse is being broken. Oh, the spirit of distraction of this age is being broken by the power of your worship. It's a day and an hour where God is setting the family free. He's setting it free. He's setting it free. He's setting it free. He's setting it free. We're going to sing it one more time, but you sing it for your daughter. You sing it for your son. Sing it for your marriage. Sing it for your relationship. Some of you pastors need to sing it for your church. Come on, as we sing it, we give. Did not say that I will set free your family the day that you stepped out. From the oldest to the youngest, they belong to me, son. From the oldest to the youngest, you don't ever have to worry. For the steps of a righteous man, they're ordered of the Lord. And because of your contrite heart, and your contrite spirit, I got your kids in the palm of my hand. Know that this is the hour that I have heard the prayer, prophet. Your prayers and your wife's prayer have not been altered. From the oldest to the youngest, I have preserved them. Through the fires, through the waters, through the nets, through the entrapments, through the lies. I declare to you that no weapon formed against your little ones can prosper. For know this day that I have begotten them. Know this day that when you committed them and dedicated them to me, that they belong to me. They were in your assignment. They were my assignment. And I'm able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you could ever ask, think, or could imagine. The dream that I gave you a month and a half ago concerning your children, the Lord says I'll unfold it. By the, mo- by the month of December, Christmas time, things will shift and things will change. And I will break, oh yes, I will break the chains and the fetters uh, that have tried to come and onslaught on your family. But the Lord says, oh, son and daughter, I've got this. There's an apostolic anointing that as you go back, there's an establishment and an order. And God says, tell him, I'm making every crooked way straight and every rough way smooth. 
in this hour, says the Lord. Reka amaso ora bashi zembre bahare beshi delebo kaha roka hamdere bahaya ya. I have heard your cry, oh daughter. I have heard your cry. Even as Hannah came to an altar and laid it at the altar, so the Spirit of the Lord would say that which you have desired will come upon you. For even as you get up, I'm going to go ahead and cause things to be shaken totally radically off. And the residue of yesteryear cannot affect you any longer. But I bring you into a prominent place of my grace where truth will prevail and truth will unfold and truth will set you free. And the Lord says, I will open your eyes for you to see that the pathway of righteousness is not far off. That the pathway of righteousness is a man, it's a person. And the Lord says, I'm going to cause my word to come and I'm shining light on it. And there's a revelation of Jesus that will come to you that will set you free from every bondage, from every disappointment, and from the things that come to distract and disassemble. No longer will you be a product of things that are unsuccessful. But the Spirit of the Lord says, Daughter, I will cause you to come up like a flower in the middle of March and April, as the sun begins to shine, I will cause it to germinate above the ground and you shall open up and give fragrance for there's an anointing that will break through. In the mighty name of Jesus, it belongs to you. It belongs to you. Let's pray for our children right now. Let's just pray for our children, our grandbabies, our children right now. Just, just if you can, just, just get in about groups of six or seven right now. Just whatever. Just pray for each other's children. Don't pray for your own. Pray for somebody else's children. Just pray right now. If you don't know what to pray, just pray in tongues if you have to. Just pray. Just breakthrough, 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 breakthrough is happening within the families.
Elizabeth or Liz. Elizabeth. Is there an Elizabeth here? Anybody? Elizabeth? Liz? Yeah, but she's watching online. Huh? She just had a baby. I heard the Lord tell me to tell her that it's about ready to happen. It's about ready to take place. So wherever you're watching, Liz, in worship, I heard the Lord say it's about ready to happen and nothing is able to stop what God is doing in your immediate family. In Jesus' name. You guys, listen, find two or three people and just tell them it's good to be in the house of the Lord. If I can have house lights on, that would be awesome. Find two or three people.
If I get a couple ushers to get me two chairs, just two chairs really quick. Just right here, just two chairs. Thank you for all participating in our little mini conference of Better Together. I'm covenanting with all of the pastors that I get to privilege to oversee them. And, you know, 20 years ago, I never thought anything like this would happen. Of course, when, when you're just planning a little church and you're thinking, Lord, you know, you don't ever think. It all started with me being hungry. And it's almost like God said, I'm gonna, we're going to play tag. And he tagged me and he says, you're it. And for the last 25 years, I've been just in hot pursuit. And it's amazing what being hungry and thirsty, they who do hunger, they who do thirst. I had a preacher told me, well, I'm already righteous. I said, you're the dumbest person I know. Because you don't understand context. It's not a one-time thing. When you read scripture, especially the Greek and the Hebrew, there's continuity to it. So when you read they who do hunger, it doesn't mean they who just hunger. It means they who hunger and continue to be hungry after righteousness sake will continue to be filled. And if you still are filled, it's because there's no pouring out. So God fills you to pour you out, then you come back. And there's a continual residual filling of the Holy Spirit. Same with the Holy Spirit. The infilling of the Holy Spirit isn't a one-time experience. <laughs> That's why some of you still speak in tongues and you have the same tongues you've had from, for 20 years. An infilling is a continual residual baptism that you get to take on as many times as you want to. And it's an awesome thing. Anyway, I don't know why I start teaching. I do all that. I, I guess that's the apostolic mantle of my life. Meredith goes, I get kicked out of all of our leadership meetings half the time because all I want to do is teach or preach or prophesy or eat tacos. <laughs> um, but, but tonight is a special night. Not only is Meredith going to preach here in just a minute, um, and we're going to minister prophetically to as many people as we can. I, I want to take a sacred moment because when people come into the network and they want to get ordained, I don't take that as a light moment. I really believe that that is a sacred moment. And we've got pastors from Modesto, California. Um, yeah. So we got Mario and Beverly Castro from Modesto and their wonderful church. Listen, they're going to come and I want them to come and we're going to, we're going to, we're going to lay hands on them, and we're going to do that here at our Better Together conference, if you can. If I can get some oil, if I could get right somebody here. to find me some oil, it would be good. Let's, let's come down here really quick. Just keep it right there, Tony. You're good. And then you guys can all witness, because it's necessary that we do this. And... thing I got to say to you guys is that things are about ready to change and shift in your life. It's, it's not going to be like the last time. And it's not even going to be like the time before that. Yeah. Things are about ready to change. Things are about ready to shift. And so it's a privilege for my wife and I to welcome you into the network of awesome people here. And I say welcome. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of times I meet people and they say, Man, they've been listening to me for probably six, seven, ten years. And I'm like, wow. You know, I'm like, wow. All over the world. It's crazy. 
And when he told me that, he goes, I've been listening to you forever. I've been stealing all your sermons. And I'm like, well, praise God. Hallelujah. Send an offering. Sean Day. <laughs> anyway, on the, on the lighter, on, on the seri- more serious note, things are about ready to shift. God is about ready to establish. Yeah. What you saw, yeah, what you saw like two and a half, three years ago was so accurate. Mm -hmm. The prophetic gift is on both of you, but it's really strong on you. And I activate the scene anointing now in Jesus' name. I've come and I unwrap it. Uh, um, I see see you at times feeling like that Christmas gift mm, that's underneath the Christmas tree that doesn't have a name on it. And you're well packaged and just nobody knows where it belongs and who it belongs to. And God says, tonight I'm putting a name on it. And there's going to be a people that will receive you and unwrap you because you're a gift to the body. And I release that in the name of Jesus. There's going to be almost 10 years of pressure lifted today. It's almost, you have felt it. It's the pressure. Pressure with children. Pressure at times with the grandkid. Pressure with church. Pressure with finance. Pressure with business. Pressure with husband. Pressure pressure because you're like the brains behind it all, even though you're not necessarily the face. But you're, you're what makes everything click. And You've known how to take a licking and keep on ticking. And God says, I refresh you and refresh your mind and I refresh your body. And you're going to find out that in this next season, tremendous health comes your way because there is a relief. God says, tell her I am going to exhale on her. Tell her she knows what it is for me to inhale, but I am exhaling. I am breathing upon her, and when I breathe on a person, I am bringing refreshment and a revival and a restoration. Oh, yes, and I will restore to you that the canker worm and the palmer worm and the, and, the, and, the, and the locust is eaten. I will establish in this season and give to you things. It's not just on your husband to teach, and you've known that, but God says I'll give you your own voice and your own platform in due time but the Lord says no I'm bringing a shift and when I bring that shift I'm shifting it from your past through your regrets through the now to dominion and you're going to see the power of God in yours in this season you're going to see the power of God evident and how you're going to see that is you're going to see one of your children's hearts turn towards you does that make sense to you in Jesus mighty name father we ordain we set them We embrace them into the fellowship, Lord God. And we, Father, set in motion the eternal purpose for true pastoral pastors to pastor and shepherd your flock. Lord, you said that you would give shepherds that have a heart of knowledge and understanding. And I'm asking, Lord, in this season that together... They would walk side by side. And I don't know why God tell you, you're not to walk behind your husband. You've never had a problem walking in front, but at times you will take the back seat. And God says, do not do that. I never called you to take the back seat. You are called to walk side by side next to him. What God is doing, he's doing together. Father, in the name of Jesus, we ordain them in front of the congregation today in Jesus name Father whatever good is in us whatever whatever good is in Merith and I Lord God I I, I bring impartation Rob Juanita come 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 Hector and Rosie come Rudy come come Pastor Paul come let's lay hands on them Father in the name of Jesus whatever good is in us brother whatever good is in us whatever good is in us stretch your hands out everybody Whatever good is in us, whatever good in us, whatever good is in us, we, 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 we bestow and give unto you in the name of Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No longer will you feel alone. No longer will you feel alone. No longer will you feel alone. 
We're better together, Mario. We're better together. When you hurt, we hurt. When you rejoice, we rejoice. Hallelujah, Father. We thank you for that. In the mighty name of Jesus. Mr. Mario Castro, Pastor Mario Castro, sir, Pastor Beverly Castro, we welcome you into Better Together Network. Welcome. It's amazing, um, Rob, 23 years ago, remember? It's just you and me. Yeah. It was you and me in a dream. It was our spouses and us in a dream. We were in our 20s. Say, me and Juanita were there. We were in our 20s. You, know, you were the best thing about it. We were busy having babies back then, but. That's what we were doing. We were in our 20s. <laughs> That's when we were alive. <laughs> okay. Are you guys ready to hear a word from Pastor Meredith? As Johnny Canales says it, take it away. Will you pull up for me Acts chapter 8? I really have come. Um, I don't feel like this is a, this, I feel like tonight is a night to decree some things. Why I pushed in praise earlier is because I really believe there's something that's needing to break. I believe the assignment, we are so quick to want to fix our families. And listen, I know our families all need help and they need what they need. But the thing is, if we can ever see that God really comes and wants to deal with regions. And the thing is, it's not just Orange County represented here. But we have people coming in from all sorts of regions all over that together collectively what is happening here is an impartation that goes back into the places that we have come from. So the breakthrough that you are getting is not just about you, but the breakthrough you are getting is about us. And it's something bigger than what we've seen. So I just want to take a few minutes tonight and and give you a thought and release something prophetic into the atmosphere here and a seed that you will take with you and take home. If you did not earlier, I want if you can put that slide back up one more time. I know it's lots of things I'm saying all at once, but if you can text B2G to this phone number, that 509 is an Eastern Washington phone number. So just so you know, that's ours, 509 309 -0993. If you will text the B2G to that, it lets us send you out when we're in the area, when we're doing stuff. But in a minute, you're going to have an opportunity to activate what is happening here in your life. And so we're going to take that back to Acts chapter 8. I just want to read this, and then I'm going to give you a couple of thoughts, and we'll see what else God does tonight. Because if nothing else, we could go home, and this has been incredible all in itself. Acts chapter 8, starting in verse 1. Now Paul, consenting to his death, at that time great persecution had arose, was consenting to his death. At that time great persecution had arose against the church, which was at Jerusalem. And they were all scattered throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. And devout men carried 
um, and devout men carried Stephen to his burial and made great lamentation over him. As for Saul, he made havoc of the church, entering every house and dragging off men and women, committing them to prison. That is, was the atmosphere of the early church. You just have to get it for a minute. He had said, go ahead and kill Stephen. He had consented in his death. And now he's going house to house and ripping people out of homes and committing them to prison. Therefore, those who were scattered went everywhere preaching the word. When Philip went down to the city of Samaria. And Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ to them. And the multitudes with one accord heeded the things which were spoken by Philip, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits, crying out with a loud voice, came out of many who were possessed, and many who were paralyzed and lame were healed. And there was great joy in the city." And there was great joy in the city. One more time. And there was great joy in the city. Father, we thank you for what you have done tonight. And we, our hearts are full and we are so grateful at where things are. But Father, we thank you that in this next little bit that you would continue to expound your word. You would break fetters and break chains and break bondages off of us. You would open our eyes and open our ears. And at the same time, Father, you would give us the ability to receive your word and cause things to shift in the things that we have carried. Our regions, our homes, our churches, our businesses that we would see and expect to break through like never before. And together we all said, amen. amen. The principles, principles. I just want to give you a couple of principles here. Um, in Genesis chapter 8, simple principle here. Um, it says, while the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, winter and summer, and day and night shall not cease. As long as the earth remains, seed time and harvest. That means there's a time to plant and there's a time to reap. As long as the earth remains, we have the promise of seed time and harvest, cold and heat, winter and summer, day and night shall not cease. I just need you to understand that is a principle. As long as the earth remains, there is the principle. In Galatians chapter 3, there's a few things I just need you to see here real quick. Now, Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He does not say, and to seeds... Um, but as of many, but of one, as to your seed, who is Christ? Skipping down a couple of verses. For you are the sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. You are the sons of God in faith through Christ, in faith through Christ Jesus. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have now put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. For if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. That is an incredible thing. If you can get that and that alone, you have to understand that God is in the process of doing something, but he does not give the promise necessarily to you just because he likes you so much. He gives the promise to Abraham's seed. And what gives you the ability to access the promise is that you realize that you are no longer your own. But when you got born again, you got baptized into the waters a baptism, you came out having put on Christ. Now when he looks at you, he cannot help but to give you what belongs to you because he does not see you. He sees Christ. And so every time you mess up, you fail and you think now that you are disqualified, you fail to recognize that your old man died and is dead and you are now alive in a new creation. Therefore, the minute you change your mindset about who 
you are and what you've got to do and who what God has done in you, then you begin to realize that everything, the promises of God are yes and amen. And everything that pertains to life and godliness, he wants to give to you, not somewhere over in heaven, seven miles off of Mars, not when, not when, if it all was about just getting to heaven to get all of it, then why are we ever here? Just for a second, if it's about, if we're going to get all of that once we get there, then why are we here? But yet the thing is, when Jesus, the disciples asked Jesus, they said, teach us how to pray. And he says, this is how you pray. Our Father, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Holy is your name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth, or better translation, in earth as it already is in heaven. Meaning now the battle we have is not trying to get there, but it's bringing there to here. That is your warfare. That is your fight is bringing it to here. And you can't do it as, until you understand that you're Abraham's seed. And if you're Abraham's seed, you're heir, heirs according to the promise. Therefore, everything that was promised to Abraham, everything that was given to him now becomes part of your right. So we are not seeds as in many but we are seed as in singular being built together, a holy habitation. We are a place in the body of Christ that is many membered yet becomes one. That's why we're better together. Because you are not greater in the body, understanding of the body. You are not greater than your neighbor. You need your neighbor. The toe is not greater than the, than the stomach. They all need each other. I can live without a toe. If I don't have a stomach, that's the whole thing. In, in Corinthians, he begins to say, you get your significance out of what people can see. But the thing is, there are things that happen in the secret places that make everything function that have to be there in order for it to happen. So let me help you, honey. Just because you don't get the pat on the back, because you put the garbage out, because nobody didn't say thank you for picking up the garbage or the lint on the chair or taking care or putting the stuff away. Listen, we all need a thank you, and I hope you get celebrated. And I hope there's a day where the, your church takes a moment and says thank you for all the volunteers. And by the way, thank you for all the volunteers years. But part of being a mother and a wife, which I've done for 30 years, I have very few thank yous for all the stuff I do. Now, I have tried to quit more than once. I have fired myself. I have told him you can't afford me. My price just went up. That laundry that used to cost you a back rub is now costing you your fishing boat. And then he started doing his own laundry. So I don't know. It just worked out. It just, it just worked out. I'm just kidding. You can keep the boat because I need you to go every once in a while. Once in a while. A little bit. Just a little bit. Can I get an amen, ladies? Thank you. So, but, 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 let, I'm just, I'm just trying to help you for a second. Because we, we, we want everybody to, but, but, but pastor, and I'm not saying this church. It's the church over there somewhere, okay? It's just over there, like way over there that we don't know. I'm sure there's one or two people in there that make sure that the pastor knows everything they do. In fact, when it's offering time, they would rather hand the offering to the pastor than put it in the bucket because they want to make sure the pastor knows that they gave. And how much is in it? Because they're going to put the number in big letters on the outside just so that somebody can see it. And you hope that it actually matches what's in the inside, but nevertheless, it's all good. But, 
but everybody's got somebody in your life. And I just want to help you because although we should be thanked and although we should be loved and although we should be appreciated, at some point you realize that we have to do what we have to do. And that is what makes the body function. So if nobody wants to take care of the kids, then we don't have the right to complain about a generation. If nobody wants to get up here and help with worship and learn how to play something, then don't complain about what they're doing. If you don't want to be a part of the answer, don't be a part of the problem. Be a part of the answer. Woo, I'm going to take an offering right now. All the pastors are going to give something. Anyway, listen, no, I'm just kidding. But, but really... It's no different. Your kids, how many of you have teenagers? Just out of curiosity. How many of you have had teenagers? Teenagers are an anomaly of their own kind. I'm not sure what they are. They're not quite children and they're not quite adults. They're not quite human. I've had three. I've got one who's still there. And you pray for me because... There's moments. Anyway, but they're not quite, they're just, and they're just different. They're sensitive. I have a son. Anyway, they, they have emotions. They have rage. They have hormones. They have all this stuff. But, but something about this generation wants to be thanked for everything they do. And I'm like, listen, mow the lawn. Before we buy AstroTurf, like Prophet Rob. Anyway, mow the lawn. Because that's what it takes to live in this house. Because there's certain things that have to happen. Anyway, I'm taking way too much time. But I'm just here for a second because don't get all hurt about stupid stuff. Let's grow up enough to realize that we're going to do what needs to be done to make things get done in this season. And if that means we got to do something a little more than what we've been doing, then we're going to do it. Because you know what? This church is about ready to transition. And that means what you've done in the past is not going to be enough for where you need to go. And so wherever you're at, in whatever church you are a part of, know that it's going to take something extra in the seasons of transition to get you where you need to go. But watch this. Acts chapter 1. The former account I made, O oh, Thaloth, th- 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 the blah, blah, blah. You try this. Thank you, Theo. We're shortening shortening it. I can't even talk tonight. Watch this. Of all that Jesus began both to do and to teach. Hmm. Joey had said it earlier today, for those of you that were here, but if Jesus is perfect theology, then we have to understand that he did not just teach, but he also did. And Luke's account begins to talk about all that he began to do and to teach. He says, of all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day which he was taken up, after he, though the Holy Spirit had had been, had given commandments to the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom he had presented himself alive, after suffering by many infallible proofs being seen by them during 40 days and speaking of things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Paul starts off the whole book of Acts, or sorry, Luke starts off the whole book of Acts by making sure that Theophilus knows that here is what I'm going to talk about. And we have, we have, we have taught the book of Acts as the book of Acts of the Apostles, but it's really the book of Acts of the Apostle of Jesus through the Apostles. It's not about what the Apostles did, it's about what Jesus did through them. So I want to make sure that bend is right because it changes your perception of what is happening here. But I have to get you to understand that when Luke begins to give him this description and he begins to write the book of Acts, what is happening here now is he's telling him of the things that he did and the things that he taught. So if you understand that, then you have to go back to one of the last times 
things before the crucifixion, that they are all together. And that is in an upper room having Passover together. And in that room, they begin to eat dinner. And at that dinner table, Jesus takes the bread and gives the bread and the wine to the disciples. And it is an amazing point of time because it is the one place in the scriptures that you see the physical body of Jesus serving the 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 serving the 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 the, the body serving the elements of communion to the body to the to what will become the body let me say it this way the physical body of Jesus is serving the memorial body of Christ which is communion to the spiritual body which is the church the ones that are about ready to be called out and sat apart the body of Christ says to the body of Christ, take and eat of my body. You got to get this. Jesus says to the disciples, the body of Christ says to the body of Christ, take my body and eat it. It's the one point in time that you have all three manifestations together in one room. And at that point, it is the transition point of where Jesus is saying, hey, listen, it's not going to happen like this anymore because I'm about ready to go and my physical body is going to be removed. But that which I teach and that which I do is going to continue. My physical body will be removed from you, but that which I teach and that which I do will still be done through my body. You got to get this. That which I teach and that which I do is still going to continue. I'm moving out of the picture, but you are going to become the body of Christ that teaches and does what I do. And you're going to do it through the elements of communion, but you're also going to do it by demonstrating in the streets what is about ready to happen. And so you have this place that transition is happening and Jesus is trying to set something in motion for what is about ready to come. But before you understand that, I got to take you back to Mark chapter 4. You good? We're just going to paraphrase it. Don't put it up there. Mark chapter 4, Jesus is in a boat. And Jesus is on his way across, across the, the, the lake. And they're going somewhere and they have something to do. But he's sleeping. The disciples get all worked up. They wake up. They start shouting. They start whatever. Jesus. Now listen. Joey got a new boat this year. I'm really, really happy for him. It has probably, I'm not lying, this is horrible, been about 10 years since I've been out fishing with him because I catch fish. <laughs> oh, I hope Bishop is watching. Anyway, I catch fish. <clears throat> so, he doesn't take me often. But we go out a few weeks ago on this new, really nice, really fast bass boat, we get to the river, and as we're getting to the river, everybody's coming off. I don't know why we didn't think anything. But we get in the boat, and I'm like, let's, let's go fishing. I bought a license. Let's go fishing. So we get out there. It's a little windy. It's a little choppy on the Columbia. It's a little bouncy. Okay, we're going to be fine. But then we get out there. And we're on the far side from the launch. We're up next to Washington. We launched in Oregon. And water starts coming over the back of the boat. And I'm like, are we going to die? <laughs> I am pretty sure this is not safe. I'm pretty sure we are going to die out there. And by the way, I'm catching fish. <laughs> so I'm not too worried while I'm still catching fish. And, and we have video to show it. Anyway, but I'm catching fish. So you guys know the story. We, went, we just got back from Mexico. We went out on a chartered trip that, that our bishop paid for us to go out on with a few of our, our peoples. And, and while we were out there, I was the only one on the boat that caught fish. And I fed everybody dinner that day. So, so I'm going to rub this in for as long as I can. Because Joey does tournaments. Anyway, but, but. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that wasn't for.
for me to stop, right? No, okay, okay. So, so, so anyway, so, so we're out there, we're out there, and it gets worse and worse. And finally, Joey looks at me and goes, I, I think we should go. And, we, and so we start to head back across. The Columbia is it's big, and it's wide, and it's just downstream from a dam where we are. And so the current's flowing good, all the rest of it. And I'm pretty sure on the way back that we're going to die. Like, should I call 911 now? Should we call search and rescue to come find my body before it hits the Donneville <laughs> Dam down river somewhere. I mean, I'm trying to figure this out. And then I'm thinking all the money we paid for this boat, and please, Lord, let the insurance be on it in case it crashes in the middle of the thing. And he's like, we just got to go faster. And so now we're at like 70 miles an hour on top of these waves, and these waves are crashing, and my back is acting like it just got in a car wreck, and I'm thinking, I'm really going to die. I'm going to fly out of the boat. Something's going to happen. And all the rest, and Joey's like, no, we're just going to get wet. I'm like, I can handle water, whatever. I'm not made of sugar, but hey, um, it's, it's so, so we get through though, and we're fine and we live, but that's, I'm not going for another 10 years. So um, that might be why he took me. And, and, but, but I had this realization, I say all of that to say this, that when they're in this boat, we talk about this like, oh, they shouldn't have been upset. In the middle of our way back, I said, one, I would have never gotten out. I would have never been Peter. Now, I'm not jumping out in a storm. No. I am hanging on for dear life. <laughs> Two, I would have been screaming at Jesus before anybody else because I'm like, hey, do you not care that we perish? And they are trying to wake him up, and he's just sleeping away. And I'm freaking out. Joey thinks it's no big deal. And I'm like, we're going to die. I, my, I need my life insurance updated. I need something taken care of. And, and I'm freaking out, and he's laughing at me. And I'm like, this is not funny. But can you imagine? These men are losing their mind trying to wake him up. And Jesus just stands up in the middle of the boat and says, hey, peace, be still. He speaks to the wind and to the storms and, re and to the winds and the waves and rebukes them. I have a problem with this because you rebuke spirits. You don't rebuke elements of nature. But yet Jesus stands up in the middle of this and begins to rebuke the wind and the waves, meaning that the wind and the waves were being manipulated by a spirit that was trying to keep them from their destination. And Jesus had to realize that, hey, even that can't keep us from where we're going because Mark chapter 5 is about ready to happen. Because when they get to Mark Mark chapter 5, now you find them on the shores, and there is a man who is out in the midst of this hillside who has a legion of demons. And this man, nobody can fix him, and nobody can help him. But when Jesus comes to cast the demons out and asks them, ask them who they are and how many they are, and they said, we're legion for we're many, and then they say something to him. They say, can you send us into the swine? Please, please don't make us leave this region. You can find it in your Bible in Mark chapter 5. So those spirits were assigned to the region. And what had happened on their way there was to keep them from doing that. And so Jesus says, sure, you can go into the swine because the swine are unclean and shouldn't have been here anyway. And he cast them out so that the man can go and testify to Decapolis how good God is. So Jesus came to deal with something that was holding back a region and holding back something that was there and holding it captive to it. And I say that because you need to understand that to go back to, Mark, or to Acts chapter 8. Because in Acts chapter 8, now you have Saul, who will later become Paul, who is absolutely tormenting the church. He's ripping families out of households, and he's throwing people in prisons, and I'm almost done. And he's taking people out, and he's, he's tormenting the church, and they have now buried Stephen. And now Philip says, I'm going to go down to Samaria. It's amazing, because Jesus also had been in Samaria. 
And Jesus had dealt with the Samaritan woman, not in the city of Samaria, but he was in the region of Samaria in Sychar. And in Sychar, he finds a place that was Jacob's well that had been given to Joseph. And at that place, he sits down on the well and begins to minister to a woman. And he tells her all things about herself, which was that she was not married to the man she was living with, although she'd already had five husbands. And she goes back into the city and becomes the first evangelist. And Jesus, who was passing through the region, now sits there and has a three-day revival because one woman with a past and a history is willing to go back into the city and bring a people out to experience Christ. But what you need to know is Sychar means the end. It's a finished place. It's the end of a thing. It's amazing because Jesus is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the beginning and the end. But he went to Samaria to deal with the end of a thing. And now Philip is in a place in Acts chapter 8 that he's been doing and dealing with the beginning of a thing. And Philip is there to finish what Jesus had started, going back to the birthing in the beginning city. And what you need to get is Samaria is a mixed place. It's a mixed seed. It's a, it, it, it has duality in it. But here now comes Philip. Philip is coming in, and he's doing what he does because he's sick and tired of what's been going on in Jerusalem and all of the drama and trauma and fighting that's happening. And he's like, man, watch, I'm going to go do something because there's a people still that need to hear what God is doing. So he goes down and begins to not just tell them about Jesus. He goes down to show them about Jesus. And he comes down in power and in demonstration to show them what Jesus is doing. And once again, therefore, those were scattered and everywhere preaching the word. Philip went down into the city and preached Christ to them. Christ to them. And the multitudes with one accord heeded these things spoken by Philip, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits, crying with a loud voice, came out of many who were possessed, and many who were paralyzed and lame were healed. And there was great joy in that city. I'm telling you, and I can get the worship team up here. We're about ready to finish this. God is wanting to do something in our regions. God is wanting to do something. But how do you break a cycle? Because we all have cycles. We've all, we've, go away. We've had good cycles. We've had bad cycles. We've seen cycles in our families. We've seen cycles in our marriages. We've seen cycles in our children. We've seen cycles in our regions that God is. How do you break a cycle? Well, listen, I've been married 30 years now. I had four children. And every time a seed was placed in my womb that connected with an egg, my cycle was broken for nine months. I've come here as a prophetic voice to declare to you that there's some things shifting in this region. There's some things shifting in your life. Pastors, there's things God is wanting to shift for you. But here's where participation meets it. Because we would love for God just to do it for us. God, come do this. Change my city. Grow my church. Really? Get up and do something. Go be a light. Go be salt. Go be generous. Go be kind. Go give yourself, your time, your talent, your treasure to your region. But if you are doing that, let me help you. Because there comes a time that when you have prayed, you have worshipped, you have walked, you have cried, you have fought, you have, you have cried and pulled the heavens down, you have stomped, you have, you have stayed up nights, you have fasted, you have done everything. Sometimes 
what it takes to get your season a breakthrough is that you have to understand you've got to put a seed in the middle of that. And you go, man, people in church talk about, talk about money and talk about stuff too much. Get over it. You go to McDonald's and give them your money. You go to Starbucks and give them your money. And you don't think twice when you reload that app. So here we go, because this is about eternal life. This isn't a this isn't a gimmick. This isn't a this isn't a, a, a bless me, make me rich kind of thing. This is a this is a, a, a principle that works. Because when in covenant, my husband gave me his seed and I was able to take it in and hold on to it, I in return was able to produce for him children and heirs that carry his name and carry his likeness and carry his image and carry his voice and carry his personality and carry his tenacity and carry who God has put in. I had the privilege of carrying that. Now I'm telling you, there comes a place that you got to understand that we in church, this is not about reception only. This is about participation. When the dark ages came and we shut up and we stopped talking and we said, just sit down and, and be quiet and listen to what the preacher has, we begin to quench the moving of the Holy Spirit in our churches because church was never supposed to be like that. Why Paul told them that all things should be done in decency and order is because there was a whole lot of crazy chaos happening around them. And we've taken that and mastered control and sophistication and thought that made us holy and it's made us dumb because God wants to hear the echo of his voice released back through your voice to him. That's why when Isaiah gets caught up and it sees the seraphim crying, holy, 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 the Lord God Almighty, the whole earth is full of his glory. They're crying one to another. You can't understand the glory of God and not open up your mouth and say something. You can't be in his presence and keep yourself. Hold up and expect God to move in your midst. He gave you the ability to respond. So here, I really believe the assignment tonight is this. That God is wanting to shift and break something over your households, over your businesses, over your region, over your churches, because Jesus has come to deal with the spirits that have caused the storm, the spirits that have caused the wave, and we get so busy looking at the wind and the waves that we lose sight that we're supposed to be going somewhere to deal with something so that a city a region can experience what God has. I'm telling you, if you are happy with just you and you, your four, I hope God shakes you until you can see something bigger. It's sad to me. And I, I don't mean this with any condemnation. I just mean it with conviction that Pastor Paul can make it from Nigeria, Africa. But there are people tonight that chose to stay home because they just didn't want to be inconvenienced. I, I, I don't mean that harsh, but how hungry are we? How bad do we want to move of God? How willing are we to get out of our comfort? How much are we willing to give up? When are we willing to get to a place where we mean what we say and say what we mean and say, God, we need a move of God. We need, <coughs> we need a move. <coughs> we need a move. I've come here 
tonight to say there's cycles breaking. <clears throat> there's cycles of dependency breaking. There are cycles of physical. You said, well, my mama had depression. That's why I struggle with it. Now, that's a cycle, baby. That's not a, that's not a given. And you can take it or you can break it. I don't want to be medicated. Thank God for medicine. Thank God for doctors. There's a place for all of that. But I'm telling you, the peace of God surpasses all understanding and guards my heart and my mind. Therefore, I should be able to cast my cares on him because he careth for me. And at some point, I have to recognize the cycles that are wicked that have come down through the genealogy and the bloodlines and in my region and in my place and say, hey, I'm not participating with that. I'm not participating with poverty. I'm not participating with sickness. I'm not participating with lack. I'm not participating with it. I'm breaking the cycle of that. Because Philip was able to go back into Samaria, into the capital of the region, and begin to preach Christ. And there was great joy in the city because people were getting free and experiencing the move of God and experiencing the power of God and experiencing the word of God. <laughs> and you have to get this, that he was able to do what he did because Jesus started it. But Jesus didn't start at the beginning, he started at the end. So now it's easy for Philip to come and finish what he started, but he starts at the beginning. So now the whole thing comes full circle. Here's the beauty of it. Jesus didn't just do that for Samaria. He did it for you and me. He finished it all on a cross on Calvary so that you and I would have the ability to take what he did. And starting at the starting point now, we can walk through it because he already did it. We can now experientially walk it out. And because he has done it and he has been it and he is it. And because now we can recognize that our life is not our own, but we are alive unto him. Now we can walk through and say, hey, addiction, you don't got me. Hey, hey divorce you're not coming in this marriage hey my children will serve the Lord my grandbabies are called because of what he did and because it stops here draw a line tonight the cycles break cancer isn't coming to you Diabetes doesn't come to you. High blood pressure doesn't have a right to you. Hey, watch this. We watch and we know you can stand on your feet. And I'm going to challenge you. If you have already text B to G, there should be a link you got. If not, there's some envelopes at some point in this next moment. You need to find a seed and put it in the middle of your cycle. And we're going to watch as things shift. And not just in the next day or two days, but in the next 40 weeks, we're going to see something so transformed. Pastors, hear me. Some of you need to take it and do it for your church. Some of you need to do it for your ministry. Business people, you need to do it. If you need a breakthrough, this is a season. I believe that God is shifting some things. And watch this, because DNA, right, is handed down through the bloodline. You can pull my blood, you can pull my spit, and find my DNA, which is 99.9% .9 white, European. Like, whatever. I was so disappointed. Really was hoping for... Anyway, I try, I'm trying to get some color. People, look, I might get wrinkles is what I'm catching. But anyway, but at the same time, 
my DNA gave me certain traits from my mom and my dad. You can trace it back to my ancestries. But when I was baptized into water baptism, I came back up. And now when I participate of the elements of communion, that the that Jesus, the body of Christ that Jesus gave to the disciples that night and participated with them and said, hey, I'm about ready to go and my body's going to be removed, but this principle is still going to work. And he now gives us the ability to do and to teach what he's given us. And when we partake of that, you partake of the DNA of Christ Meaning that anything broken in the DNA that I originally had is eradicated because his bloodline is stronger and better than anything that my endemic father and mother tried to give me. And so now I can take hold of that and break the cycle of poverty, break the cycle of premature death, break the cycle of pain, break the cycle that has come. I'm telling you, I'm after something tonight because there are cycles breaking in your life. And as long as you think it's normal, you will tolerate it. Because that's what my mom had. And that's what my grandma had. And that's what my grandpa did. I love your mom and your dad and your grandpa and all of the people who gave you life. But at some point, I love God more. I am thankful for my mom and dad. But I didn't come because they were great people. But I came through them because God sent me here for a season such as this to break cycles that's part of my anointing is God has called me to help break cycles listen we're going to pray I want to pray for some specific things but before we do that we're going to worship and I need you to participate in this next moment find a seed put your seed in the middle of the cycle and I am believing with you and we are believing with you that God is breaking it on your behalf. Let's sing something. Please, can we put some buckets up here and just let the people come? Come, come, come. There is
I need every senior pastor that's here just to come up here real quick because God is breaking the demonic influence that has tried to come over your houses, both naturally and spiritually, the things you have had to fight in the last season, the stuff that you've had to push back against. And part of what I'm here tonight is to decree over your households and over your churches that God is shifting something and God is moving something. So know this, that if you come to this church, that if it breaks over them and it breaks over this, it breaks over you. So I need you not to sit back and watch. I need you to lean in with us because God is moving something over powerhouse and God is releasing. Listen, there is a stability and there is a permanency that is coming in this next season for I hear the sound of, of, of hammers and I hear the sound of saws and I hear the sound of what has been, it has been transient in a season now become permanent and the struggle has been for permanency the struggle has been for something that is stable the struggle has been not just for the building but it has been for your house and I hear the Lord say enough is enough for that which has tried to keep you unstable and that which has tried to keep you immobile and has tried to keep you distracted is now broken over your your life says the spirit of grace for I am eradicating the assignment that came over you even as a child and that which came to torment you Rosie and say that you never knew where you would be and how long you would be there and how long you could stay and I hear the Lord say it breaks today in the name of of Jesus for I will give you a house then I will give you a building and I will give you a place and you shall know the goodness of God says the Spirit of the Lord come on come on come on come on there is power in the name of Jesus there is power in God, I just need a piece of land. I just, I just need a building. I just need, and God has given you over and over open doors and open places, but yet the minute you got in, it was too small for what he was about ready to do. But I hear the Lord say, watch what shifts in this next season. For I am blowing open even your imagination. I see a piece of land just on the side of the city that you've been looking at. And you said, God, I don't know. I don't know if this is right or this is wrong. I hear the Lord say, you go do it. You take it because I am causing favor to come upon you. And at the same time, I am breaking some things in your family, things that have tormented your wife, not just for the last 
season, but it's gone on for the last 12 to 15 years where she will struggle at times and she'll pray through it, but it comes back again and again and she's constantly having to face and fight that. But I hear the Lord say, son, by the time you get back, it is done and it is finished and you're about ready to see such breakthrough and deliverance on her behalf. I'm touching your mom and dad. I'm touching your sister. I'm touching your family. I'm touching your leaders. I'm touching your pastors. I'm touching your people. I'm touching your sons. I'm touching your daughters. And I will leave your name as a legacy in Nigeria. And my goodness, says the Spirit of the Lord, you were a man from nowhere who knew nothing. And I hear the Lord say, but I picked you up and I called you out. And I will do for you, Paul, what you could not do for yourself. I will make you a legacy. I will make you a name. And I will cause your name to be great amongst your people, says the Spirit of the Lord. Woo! I heard the Spirit of heaven. He said, son, look up. And you will begin to see the umbrella of the unfolding, manifested glory. I literally saw from here an umbrella get lifted. And I heard the Lord say, it's not an umbrella to protect from the rain. And it's not an umbrella to give you shade. It's the covering of my glory that's about to go over your nation. Where you came here not only to be a part, but to take something back. The Spirit of God says you're taking back a greater glory, a greater faith. But you're taking back everything that was taken from you. I literally saw that there was people that made promises to you. I will fund you here. I will help you there. And then when you pulled on that gift or when you pulled on what they said, it seemed like the, the tables were turned and the carpet was pulled and you felt like, how am I going to do it? The Lord says, the covering of this house, the covering of the, of the network, the covering of the people are going to come alongside you. Lift up your hands like an earring in the river. And you are going to see the Joshua's no more than take the land. The Spirit of God says, son, get ready. You're going to see a mighty move. situation that you had to deal with in the last year and a half and you had to put somebody out of the church who would come against you and your wife and they were talking and it was it was the undercurrent they were creating and when you did it it broke your heart because it was a relationship that you had loved and that person that man I see the, 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 the venom that came even after he left that tried to come as an assignment 
that was meant to one, crush your heart, two, to keep you from trusting, and three, to keep and, and isolate you and your ministry. But I heard the Lord say, I will deal with him. For your heart was right and righteous. And the witchcraft and the offense that took hold of him and the fear his life has been preserved because of your prayers. But I hear the Lord say the hour has come that I will deal with him and bring righteousness to him. And watch what I'm about ready to do. For son, I release you from the curse that he brought to you. And I release you from the venom of the words that he tried to infect your heart with. And I release you from the limitations of what he tried to bring to you. And I hear the Lord say, I will shout your name in his his dreams and I will shout your name in the family and in the environment that he came to taint for I am cleaning up the mess that has been there and watch what I will do for I will vindicate you and I will cause righteousness to be on your side and your portion says the spirit of the Lord and know this that from this day on you do not have to deal with that witchcraft anymore but I free you and I free your church from the assignment that it tried to bring on your behalf says the spirit of grace now it's broken are well you're a well-oiled machine and the fact that you have stood the times and testings you know how to keep on going when life is hard you know how to keep on going when it's good you have seen a thing or two over your lifetime and you have stood to still declare the goodness of God in it but pastors I hear the Lord say watch because you thought it was time to begin to transition. And you thought that there are things that were beginning. That I hear conversations that have gone on. And how do we do this next season? And what does God do? And what does it look like? And I heard the Lord say, there is no retirement in my kingdom. But I hear the Lord say, I am giving you a fresh fire. For we need fathers and we need mothers in this season. And I hear the Lord say, watch what I'm about ready to do for you, for your region, and for your family. For you have contended for your children over the last season. And you have fought for your daughters. And I hear the Lord say, I am showing up in power and in strength. And I am touching them. And I am moving on their behalf. And watch what I'm about ready to do. Because it's not just them. It's the grandbabies. And it's that which you've carried. But I hear the Lord say, the good things that you have experienced have only just begun. For I am going to establish you once again in your region. I see leaders of the city coming to you asking for wisdom in the next season. I see you standing up on platforms and beginning to proclaim the goodness of God and demonstrating his power. I hear the Lord say, watch what I'm about ready to do. For there has been a pushback that you experienced in the last season, kind of different than anything you had seen before. And, I, and not just related to the pandemic, but just a pushback that you felt. And I heard the Lord say, you thought it was the enemy. But I was causing strength and resilience to arise in you in the midst of it. But now I lift the pressure that you have seen and you have known. And watch how far you can jump. Watch how great you can fly.
fly. Watch how strong you became because there was no quit in you. When you could have given up and you could have thrown it in, you said, I'm walking this thing out. And I hear the Lord say, I'm about ready to blow over your region like never before. And I'm causing people who left you in a fence to come back and make things right. And I'm going to bring people you've never known and you've never seen into your place. And they will be sent by me, says the Spirit of the Lord. And you will find strength in their additions. And you will find grace in what they bring. But know this, that I am amplifying once again the voice that is within you both. And I am causing the cycles that have tried to keep you dormant to be broken once and for all, says the Spirit of Grace. This is the season where I will bring back the prodigals. For I have promised you year after year, but you are entering as you go back a season where the prodigals that are going to come back to you, and you will begin to sense it, and you will begin to see it, and they will begin to feel it, and you will begin to partake of it, son. For I hear the Spirit of the Lord say, the cycles of disappointment come to an end. For it's almost been like, God, I'm so glad we made it through this last season. But the fear that lingers in the back is, what about if something happens again? What about, do we have to go around this mountain anymore? And I hear the Lord say, son and daughter, it's over. I am moving things on your behalf that need to be moved. The cycle of loss, the cycle of premature death, the death of dreams, the death of relationships, and the death of your son. Those cycles are broken tonight. For you have taken and put a seed in the middle of the cycle. And I hear the Spirit of the Lord say, watch what I'm about ready to do. For I will elevate your voice and I will cause that which I have given you to once again be executed on your behalf and you will find that there is great favor favor with the city but I am expanding your vision beyond the little place and the little location in the middle of where you've been and I will cause your eye to once again begin to look at the region that you have been planted in for I am expanding you says the spirit of the Lord and you don't have to be afraid for the rug is not going to be pulled out and and things aren't going to fall apart and you're not going to have to rebuild because you said, God, I'm too old to go through this again. I'm too old to be broken again. I'm too old to be disappointed again. And I heard the Lord say, son, it's over. It's over. It's over. It's over. The fear, the fear is broken today and you are delivered and as you are delivered, you're going to go back and deliver a people out of the bondage of yesterday and the pain of yesterday and you're a cycle breaker you broke cycles in your family you've broken cycles
cycles in your house. You've broken cycles in your people. Watch what I'm about ready to do. For mercy will triumph. Mercy will triumph. Mercy will triumph. Mercy will triumph, says the Spirit of the Lord. alone no longer alone no longer alone no longer alone isolation has wanted to keep you pain and disappointment broken promises and broken yesterdays and you have been one who said God I, I'm so tired of people taking cheap shots and not fulfilling their word and I hear the Lord say son today I put on you badger skin and I'm gonna cause the disappointments of yesterday to so be removed off of you. And you're going to find that there is the ability to do what needs to be done. I put a plow in your hand and a sickle in the other. You go ahead and plow those fields and you go ahead and reap what needs to be reaped. You go ahead and share the word and you go ahead and pull them in. For I hear the Lord say, I will give you strategic ways, not just social media, but I will give you other strategic ways to do what I am calling you to do in your region. And watch what's about ready to happen, says the Spirit of the Lord. I break the cycle over your life. I break it, 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 I break it. Now, in the name of Jesus, come here, come here. Your cycle, the things that have been off, the things that have been broken, the things that have been harsh, the things that have caused you frustration. God is breaking the cycle of frustration in your life, daughter. Your praise, your prayer, your worship, your prophecy breaks every cycle now in the name of Jesus. It breaks, it breaks, it breaks, it breaks, it breaks, it breaks. It breaks the ties that bind you to old things. It breaks the ties that bind you to old things. It breaks the ties that hold you captive to other seasons and other places and other things. I hear the Lord say, son, watch what I'm about ready to do. Loyalty has been who you are, but I am going to cause you to understand what I'm doing in this season. And I am going to elevate you, says the Spirit of the Lord. And watch what happens as as you see there is a cycle that has kept you it's, it's like a chain you could go so far and it pulled you back so far and pulled you back like like a dog that was bound by that thing but what nobody realized is why they thought you were safe because you were limited you got bigger and stronger and this is a season God is breaking the chains that have kept you. <laughs> Woo! Go ahead and laugh. You cried enough. Go ahead and laugh. God is breaking. Breaking. There's family things. There's things that have kept you immobile. You only felt like you could go so far because that's how far your family made it out. That's how far your dad made it. That's how far your mom made it. And you're like, God, I don't know if I can make it any farther than that. It's breaking. You are a cycle breaker. Your children will go farther than you, but you're going farther than what you thought says the spirit of grace.
We're having church people. Africa style, right here. I also heard the month of November. At the beginning of the year, you guys both sowed a significant seed that hurts you. And the seed that you sowed, God says, is about ready to manifest in the month of November. And you're about ready, listen to me, you're about ready to triple in finance. The things that you worried about this year you will never have to worry about ever again i break the cycle says the spirit of the lord watch and see what i will do because there will be moments where you are in one place and she's in another and there will be double the finances that will come and it will be okay because the spirit of the lord is with you and the spirit of the lord is now going to be your guard and the spirit of the lord is going to be beside you he will lead you in the praise places that will liberate you but know that i'm the god that will do it and i will do it again and i will bring forth such a triple oh yes a, not a double for your trouble there's a triple there's a triple anointing in finances and a triple anointing in breakthrough that is coming to your family. And the month of November is simply the beginning where you will see the fruition of that thing. And there's nothing nobody can do about it. We set it in motion now in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. So watch this. We prayed for them. Now we're going to pray for you. So anybody in this section right here who wants their cycles broken need to get here now. 
Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Quick, 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 quick. If you haven't been prayed for, if you're in this section, if you're in this section right here, come up quick. Come up quick. And between all of us, we're going to lay hands on you. We're going to pray for you. We're going to believe that this thing breaks. We'll get you guys here in a second. Ushers. I need somebody with Paul. I need somebody with Rob. I need somebody with Joey, somebody with me. And just stick with us. Got it? All right. Let's sing.
right hand is going to be his voice in the spirit. Get ready for that movement in the Lord. Get ready for that movement and you're going to see that the hand of God is about to release and you're going to see the miracle power of God at work in your life from this moment. Your breakthrough happens now. A severing of the spirit, a severing and a cutting away. No longer will you feel limited and no longer will you feel belittled and no longer will you feel oppressed and suppressed. And that thing that tried to take your voice, uh, the Lord says, I will unmask it and I will take it away and I will unveil and I will give you back a voice and I will give you back your roar and I will give you back your shout and no longer will you ever feel insignificant another day of your life but I remove that that reproach I remove it from you I remove it from your children I remove it from your grandchildren it stops here tonight we break the cycle in the name of Jesus Come, just come. You're good. Somebody's strong. <laughs> Amen to that. You need resources. Bring it to manifestation for the Lord is designed for you in the next. Yeah. Between now and February, I don't know why I keep saying February, but between now and February, you're going to experience a thousand times more than what you've seen before by the Spirit of God. Come on. Come on, baby. In the name of Jesus. Multi-millionaires will start coming to your church. Musicians and singers will start coming to your church.
You're accepted, Tony. You don't have to work for it. You don't have to work for it. Too many times you felt like Zacchaeus. You felt short. And all you had to do the whole time was climb a tree. And when you climbed the tree so that you could see what you wanted to see, the thing that you were looking for now comes looking for you. Because you're significant and you're accepted. And tonight we break the cycle of disappointment. We break the cycle of anything that comes to poverty. Anything that comes to at nighttime, at, particularly in the night season, that comes to try to dismantle and disassemble you in the mighty name of Jesus. I told you at your church you're about ready to double. Accept that. Accept that. Challenge your people. Turn your back on the people, not to forsake them, but to lead them. And as you lead them into the promised places, you're going to see the promise keeper give to you what you need. In the name of Jesus, I just declare, I release that over to you in Jesus' name. Pastor Tommy and your wife, too, I, 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 I begin to hear, I see a piece of property for you. I don't know what that means. I just saw a piece of pro- I saw I saw, I saw a piece of property that God wants to give to you. And I want to be able to speak that into existence. And it's not in a bad part of town. It's actually in a good part of town. And, and it's going to be significant for this next season and this next move that God is going to have you partake of and participate in. Your worship got you there. And it's your worship that will keep you there. But God has got some things because you have experienced delay in many facets and ways. I'm here to declare to you that season is over. I break the cycle of delay and disappointment. And what God promised you 25 years ago, you'll see it unfold. And there's nothing nobody can do about that. And then I see also, I see that there was a wedge around seven to ten years ago within the family that God is removing. And by Christmas time, things are going to mend. I don't understand that. But you're about ready to see the family mend And there's going to be a flow within the family and a unison. Does does that make sense to you? There's a unison. Because you sometimes have had to fight. And your fight hasn't even been outside. Your fight has been inside. And there's been a tug of war. But the Lord told me to tell you the tug of war is over. Your worship got you there. Your worship kept you there. You could have been offended. And it came. It came. But there's no puss in it. And the Lord says, you suffered successfully. Now watch and see what God can do. I'll rise you up out of the ash heaps. I don't know if it's a son-in-law. A, a, a son, I, I, see a, I see a man. But God's going to make it right. And when you, may, when you see that, when you see that, Watch and see the things that just take place. It was the enemy came in to try to distract, to try to disassemble because at the time things were rocking and rolling. You said, what in the world happened? God says, don't worry. That season and timing is coming back. And in the right season, you're going to be, there's property. I don't know if it was six or seven years ago, there was property that tried to arise and somehow it just fell. God says, I'm bringing that season back. This time it won't fall for your ground. Open your hands. Open your hands. I don't know why there's an anointing for me with property. There is. God has blessed me with property. Okay? And I I release the favor that God has placed within me. I release. I give it to you. I give it to you guys. Let there be anointing to receive properties. Properties in Jesus' name. Properties. Million-dollar properties. 
in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I release that. Ha. God's breaking cycles, man. I said he's breaking cycles. Breaking cycles. Breaking cycles. Breaking cycles, birthday girl. Breaking cycles. Mm -hmm. Breaking cycles. Yes, he is. Breaking cycles. He's breaking cycles over you, Vanessa. He's breaking cycles. No longer do you have to weep in the middle of the night that nobody knows about. The very petitions that you have, you have granted and released to the Lord. Watch and see this time next year. Watch and see the place that I have you in and the position I put you in. It's going to be a prominent place. I'm going, I'm going to bring you into that place of such a significant place. You're no longer going to feel the way you do. In the mighty name of Jesus, there's tremendous breakthrough, but he's breaking the cycle of disappointment. And even as Jesus was disappointed, when he was looking for fig tree, for figs in the fig tree, he was disappointed. I, in the name of Jesus, do exactly what Jesus did in his time of disappointment. He cursed the tree of his disappointment. I curse the tree of your disappointment, and never will you ever eat from that fruit again. In the mighty name of Jesus, I loose you from that false expectation. I loose you from that in the name that is above every name. I loose you from that false expectation in Jesus' mighty name. You have been promised more things than most people and never seen it come to fruition. That season of your life comes to an end. Now, in the name of Jesus. Wow. He says, you are completely loved. You are fully embraced. You have a knowing and a belonging. And what you have now discovered, you're about to take to your brothers. I heard the Spirit of the Lord say, get ready, Isaac. Get ready, Joel. I'm about to visit you. There is an envy and a jealousy that they have. Because you've remained faithful to the course. One veered and has come back. Others have come and stumbled and fallen. And now they look upon their affliction and they say, it's not fair. But the Lord says, I am a restorer of all things. In this next season of your life, connection through the phone and visitations will begin to take place. And suddenly there will be an awakening within life. I will deliver him from the law. I will remove him from bondage and give back to him his joy. For he has grabbed hold of roots and traditions and he's lost the mouth to prophesy. He's lost the mouth to sing and to worship. He lost the heart to lift his hands. But did I not call his wife to be a psalmist in a song? The Lord says I'm about to awaken her music yet again. For there is a time where she was being heard around the world, but those doors have closed. But it's only been closed because they've lost sight of me. And I shall awaken them in the midnight hour, and I will say, Make well and make good with the one whom I favor, for I have put something special on you. They call you Jose, but your name is Joseph. You are a man of increase. He says, I awaken you today to the fullness of the possessions that I have for you, and you will give it unto Joel, and you will remind him of the words and the promises that God has and they still remain yes and amen. I will deliver him from habit and addiction. I will remind him of the things that I put on his hand and I will remind him of the timing of God but it won't come unless there's a voice spoken and you are the voice and the word that must come and as you visit him in that night in that night of darkness you will lay hands on him and you will wrestle. He says are you not a marine? Are you not one that says I will not live one 
abandoned soldier behind. You will not leave your brothers behind, for you will grab hold of them, and firemen carry them out of the pit, set their feet upon the rock, and I will establish their ways, for I have seen the dark darkness that has come. But the Lord says, you are a light of light, son. I put a new light upon you to set your family at liberty. Get ready for a fresh sound that will come to your brothers and set them at liberty. This is my promise given unto you, says the Spirit of God. Oscar? Oscar, who's Oscar? Oscar Perez, is it Oscar Perez? Is he here? Where are you, Oscar? Come on up here. Hurry, hurry, hurry. God has called you by name. Prophetically, Papa is going to pour water on you to remove the field. Except you don't see midnight today. By the time you see midnight, the longest of your midnight is one minute and it's over. <laughs> As the water comes upon you, it's going to take you away from those fields. The where you are right now is a struggle. Do you understand what I'm saying? So see, I see like a tree in front of your house, like a massive tree. And the Lord said to me, the tree looks dry. Do you understand what I'm saying? It looks dry. And that is the explanation of your life. But from today, as this water comes upon you, it cleans you from that field. That again, you will not repeat pain. Doors will be opened for you from this day and you will no longer sink because everything you've tried to do did not work everything even when you were genuine did not work mercy is about to be released this prophetic water is about to produce mercy for you that from this day what smells out of your body that causes rejection is over forever Lift your hands, close your eyes, expect it. Shibala Dabo, Sida Dabo, Shibala Dabo. Woo! Yes! Cycles are breaking. Cycles are breaking. Listen, if you're in this section and you want prayer, come up here quick. The young man in the middle, black shirt, pink patch. Watch us. Favor is coming on your life. For you have fought for everything you've known up to now. And you have had to push through just to be where you are. But I hear the Lord say that season of fighting to get comes to an end. For there is grace in this season that will elevate you into places you didn't know you could be. And God is causing mercy to come to you. And doors are opening. I see some things for upper education opening, college stuff coming through, finances that you thought maybe the chance and opportunities had missed that are coming back around. It's not over yet, says the Spirit of the Lord. Do not give 
give up because there are people watching what you're doing. Even as you go into the fall of this year, there are things moving on your behalf. And I break the cycles that you have gone through that you feel like you have to fight and you feel like it's work to get where you need to go. God is causing grace to reign upon you. Lift your hands. Father, in the name of Jesus, I release, release, release favor like never before. Come on, church. Favor like never before. Great grace, great mercy in this season. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Father, now, 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 now. Cycles break, cycles break, cycles break, cycles break, cycles break. Woo! Yeah. Man, God is doing something for you and your household. God is breaking some things. You've already seen things so shift and change just in the last five years. But the last five years are nowhere for where God is wanting to take you. Do not settle with how good it has been because God is wanting to take that and elevate it yet again. And I hear the Lord say, get ready for it's a season. I'm giving you your fight back. I'm causing you to, to, to fight once again for the dream. There were some things that God showed you as a child. Somewhere around seven, six, seven years old that you dreamed of that one day and there's times you see glimpses of it now and it's like I'm doing and and I can see it coming but I heard the Lord say I'm about ready to elevate you up into a whole nother dimension and watch what I'm going to do because your diligence and the favor on your life is bringing you into places that will begin to do things it has to do with your career it has to do with job it has to do with your house that has to do with so many things but God is moving things on your behalf raise your hands cycles are breaking the lack the not enough the things that you came out of are done today says the Spirit of the Lord you don't ever have to go back there again you're never going back to that again you're never going back to that again you're never going back to that again it breaks now in the name of Jesus it breaks it breaks it breaks it breaks now in the name of Jesus. Woo! Father, in Jesus' name. Ka. Hello, sir. I don't know. Ka. Shut up. I don't know, Ka. I don't know what is Mali. It's my last name. Wow. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Ha. You've walked ha. alone for ha. a long time. Ha. 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 God says no longer when you walk alone. That you will never again. He says it's not good for a man to be alone. It's, it's beyond marriage, but he's God says you've been fighting battles alone. You've been alone. But he says I'm counseling the circle of fighting battles alone. That you are going to step into a place where supernaturally there will be grace that will begin to manifest for you that everything that the enemy has taken from you God is about to return them back hundredfold that this part you walk alone that you are using faith to break loose from rejection but the enemy is trying to interpret to you that you cannot go beyond where he attacked you from but the chain broke this morning by the Spirit of God that you are going to see today supernaturally a shift in the spirit realm. Now, the anointing that will come upon you is going to produce a fragrance that people from a distance will begin to remember you. The people will begin to call you and you will begin to see supernaturally a change. So you're going to anoint him because the Lord said he's been alone for a long time. I don't know what being alone is to you but I see you walking in a path alone. But God says and you're like that man at the pool of Bethsaida that I have no man. I have no man to put me in the water. And you've been asking God, your eyes is looking at opportunities but you don't know how to get to the opportunities. 
this oil, can you pull your shoes up? Because you are going to step into it. Yes, sir. It's prophetic. Not with your socks. Remove your shoes. Everything, there must be a point of contact to your leg directly. Help him. Don't worry. They will help you. Help start from now. This is prophetic. For people to help you, then you'll begin to see divine help. Supernaturally. From today. What you cannot do by your strength, the help of God will help you. You've been trying your best like the man. Every time I get close, another step before me. But today, by this oil, favor on your hand, increase in your hand, favor on your head, increase in your hand, speed on your feet. These three dimensions of grace will come upon you by the power of God. You know. So, Mama, please, you will touch his hand. You will touch, you can, can you touch his feet? Can you touch his feet with the oil? I don't know if you will survive this today. Karabo Shidela Kusa Ela Uta Ata Usa Tedebede Bedosha Repella Dabose. There is someone here, I don't know what days in Avenue is, but I see an angel with, uh, with an address. Days in Avenue, I don't know who is in Days in Avenue. I don't know if that is around here, but I see an Aves coming towards that area. And whoever it is, get ready to receive grace and supernatural harvest in your family by the power of the Almighty God in the name of Jesus Christ. There's an attack in the spirit over this woman. I see, I see a personality harassed her sexually in the dream, you know, and that personality is about. Please, can you lay hands on the womb that strange, strange? She's a poroto zikidia, but eh, eh, tequila brono zikidia. Addiction breaks from you. Strange personalities leave you. In the name of Jesus Christ, by the power of the Almighty God, you are repeating the problem, the battles of your mother. It's the circle hand right now. You can go through what your mother went through. Enough is enough. The circle. This, oh my God. Oh my God. Breaks completely. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Kaborodo Sidihiriada is broken, is broken, is broken. Thank you, Jesus. Cycles, I've been broken tonight. You guys got a little taste of Africa. We had Africa night. Look at the Africa. They, they don't have time there. They got nowhere to go, man. They're, they're there. They're, uh, we, they, they go all night. Almost like Mexicans. Almost. Right, right. It's almost like another 20 minutes. It's nacho time, right? It's like nacho time. Um, I'm just trying to be sensitive here. See what's... Yeah, thank you, Jesus. Just stretch your hands out right here. God's bringing deliverance to her. Yeah. Yeah, it's okay. You're not just crying for yourself, baby. You're crying for your generation that has been mishandled.
sir. What is China to you? What is China? You, you, you. Yeah, what is China to you? Come. What is... Is there anything to do with China or something? This... Right, so one of our ministry partners which is Lester, has always felt a call to China. So you plan to go? Because I see China, and, and I see like a, like a sword that needs to be sharpened. Mm. Do you understand? That you are trying to cut a tree spiritually. You know, and I see China written on it. But he's not cutting because you need to sharpen the sword. I don't know what that prophet. He does live. He has a church in Chino, which means China. Oh, so it's Chino now. Oh, wow. 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 That's where your church is at. Yeah, it's Chino. Your oh. sword is dull, but he's sharpening it. Wow. Because you're trying to cut down some things. Tree, our people. Mm. Yeah. And you can only cut down trees if you're harvesting them. Because you're building. Because you're building people and it's a season where thank you for the microphone <laughs> it's a season where you're building people but God gives to you a new sword that is a double edged sword of spirit oh of spirit and word it's the apostolic and the prophetic. It is grace and truth. It is mercy and justice. Oh, God. Okay, finish your word of knowledge. Finish your word of knowledge. I've already done it. Wow. God, I got interpretation of tongues. Shake hey Isn't that wonderful? Have you guys had a good time tonight? Do you believe Meredith had a word of God? Breaking cycles was a right on time word. You're leaving here. Listen, it's 1015. Only crazy people stay at 1015 just to have church. I'm telling you, a live church, you guys are awesome people. Yes. Powerhouse, you guys are awesome people. <laughs> Mr. Chino, you're awesome, man. All your surrounding people, everything, everybody that's in California, listen to me. Our heart, I don't know why God has given me, Cal I don't know why. I just, there's a grace on my life for California, always has. All my favorite, some of my favorite people live in California. I don't know why God just didn't send me here in the first place and do this, but, 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 but I guess he did. I guess he did. He sent you guys here to me and be part of me. And so I am so happy to be part. Meredith and I are happy to be part. And powerhouse and a live church, you can't get rid of me. I'm here. Our hearts, our hearts are not to take from you. Our hearts are to show you Jesus and, and, and get you hungry and thirsty for more of him. I have some of the best guys and gals in the whole planet. I do. I, have, I, got, I got Pastor Paul. I got, I got this guy right here. I got Prophet Robert. I got my wife. I got their family. I got, I, I'm telling you, that's just some of them. It is. Word of knowledge, stupid. I mean, it's like, he, no, I'm just like, but, but I mean, you know, he just got off a 40 day fast. You go fast 40 days with just water. God will give you names too. Okay. 
You pay a price for that. Right? Better get social I mean, security one, of day, one of these days he'll get as spiritual as me. I, I do 80 day fast, but you know, but you know, he's not there yet. It's... Hey, do this with us though. Stretch your hands out to what was given tonight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because not only have we ministered. The seed is to you, broken. But cycles break tonight, and yeah. the seed breaks cycles. So, Father, I stand today in my office as a prophet and declare that every offering given here, online, however it was, does not leave the lives of the people, but it returns back to them in ways that they did not even imagine it would. That, Father, this seed comes forth and bears much fruit, that this is a hundredfold return tonight. And we declare the blessing and the goodness of God upon upon it in Jesus mighty name and we all said amen amen pastor Rudy come and close us wow stick up your hands in the air wave them like you really don't care at this point wow Father, we thank you and we praise you, Lord God, for what you've done in these meetings so far. Lord, life transforming. Lord, we just pray that whatever took place in our heart, we would carry it, Father, that we would uh, receive it to the very core of who we are in the name of Jesus. I just thank you, Lord. The cycles were broken today by the word of the Lord. I thank you that we're not going back. We're going forward. Lord, I pray traveling mercies on, on everybody that's going home and wonderful rest tonight in the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody give my hand clap of praise this evening. Pastors, those of you that are here tomorrow morning, 10 a.m., we will be back. Those of you that have registered and your teams, you'll be back. Until then, listen, Prophet Robin Juanita brought some product.